food, it's Blitz, and today we've got a bit more history. This time we're going to look at the IS. Well, what? It gets really confusing with the Soviets because a lot of their heavy tank production didn't actually get produced. So there's a bit of confusion, and it all starts with this tank, the IS-3. Designed and developed by the Soviet Union in 1944 and coming into service in 1945, where they were used in the Soviet invasion of Hungary and were last seen operationally under the Soviet banner in the Prague Spring in 1968. The Russians, however, sold them to various countries and the last use of a combat version of the IS-3 was by the Army of South Ossetia in 1995. So, this tank is in the game. It's a Russian Tier 8 Heavy. It was designated the IS-3 and Object 703. It was more over the Object 703 following de-Stalinization because the IS stands for Joseph Stalin. It's a proper heavy tank. Um, thing is, the Russians moved away from heavy tanks after the war, favouring their fast mediums. So they, they, they dropped all development of the heavies by the 1950s and focused purely on the T-62. But spawning from this, I mean, this is the daddy of all the Russian heavy tanks following the end of the war until they dropped the idea of heavy tanks completely. The thing about the IS-3, it looks mean, juicy and heavy. The Egyptian army acquired about a hundred of these things from the Soviet Union and they were in the Six Day War, where, well, to be honest with you, they really didn't shine. They were too slow, they had very poor performance on the engine and their rate of fire was just abysmal. In fact, they lost about 73 IS-3s during the 1967 war. So bad was the tank that the Egyptian army pulled them from service immediately after the war. And one remained, or at least a few remained, until 1973. Interestingly, the Israeli Defense Forces captured quite a number of IS-3s and subsequently found them all to be abysmal and dropped the idea of converting and using them because their performance was just so bad. Their rate of fire slow, their engine was slow, and it kept breaking down, so they didn't use it. So the IS-3, whilst a tank in its own right, spawned a generation of Russian heavies. Most notably in the game is this, the IS-5. Now, the IS-5, you can see here next to an IS-3, bears virtually the same characteristics. It's got that pikey nose, that super bold turret, and, well, for all intents and purposes, it's the same tank. And this is the thing. The IS-5 kind of existed. This is where it gets really confusing. So you can see there, they are very similar. The difference between the IS-3 and the IS-5 is actually it's a longer hull and a few more road wheels. But the IS-5 came about from this tank, the Object 705, which, as you can see from this design drawing, is an IS with rear-mounted turret. Now, they do have an, I, an Object 705 in World of Tanks. That is a picture of one there. Admittedly, it's an artist's conception, but the tank would have realistically looked like this. It's rear-mounted. It's got a longer hull, and that spawned this tank, the Object 730, or the IS-5 as we know it. Now, the IS-5, as I say, was basically an IS-3 with additional road wheels and a longer hull. It had exactly the same turret and exactly the same gun. It was a prototype and, you know, it really didn't perform. It was absolutely awful, but it was a prototype. And nobody really knows the real name of this tank. The official designation is Object 730 because all Russian prototype uh, experimental tanks are actually called Object. It was termed an IS-5, albeit briefly, but the correct name of this tank, oddly enough, is T-10 because it is a prototype. And it is the prototype of the T-10. And the T-10 has like numerous IS designations. Oddly, I mean, it's, it's basically the IS-5, um, the IS-8, the IS-9 and the IS-10. The only real designations for this tank 
is that of the object 730 and T10. That is it. So, whilst we have an IS-5 in the game, it didn't really exist, albeit as a prototype mock-up. The tank that this spawned, however, did exist. And it's basically the modified version of the prototype. So, the IS-5 is just a prototype tank. Uh, there are only a couple of them built. It went through testing. It was absolutely awful. It was just as bad as the IS-3, funnily enough. Mechanical issues, poor gun handling, excessively long road, uh, load time. But it spawned this tank, which was the definitive version. That is the IS-8, which was renamed the T-10. But its actual name is the Object 730. The same designation as the IS-5, because it's the same bloody tank. Um, the IS-5 is just the prototype of the IS-8, which is interesting. The difference between the IS-8 and the IS-5, in fairness, is the gun. Because the gun on the IS-5 was that of the IS-3, and the IS-3's gun wasn't that good, as everybody discovered. Now, the IS-8 really did exist, but it was never designated the IS-8. The reason for that is, yes, it did move from the prototype stage, so it was no longer called the Object 730. In fact, over a thousand of these things were built. But by now, Khrushchev had uh, brought in destalinization, and the IS designation actually stands for Joseph Stalin. So they had to drop that moniker of IS, hence the reason why it was called the T-10. And all the models prior to that, namely the IS-5, were also designated not IS. They were designated T-10, Object 730. So it's, it's very difficult to understand. Realistically, the IS-5 is the IS-8, the stock version of the Tech Tree tank. But Wargaming have sliced it in as a premium tank, which is basically the cheapest premium tank you can get in the game, and stuck it in there to, to give us a bit of variation. As you can see, the IS-3 here on the left, compared to the IS-8 on the right, the daddy spawned that pike nose, that, that better sort of hull, better armoured hull, and that turret. Although by the time of the IS-8, the turret had to be increased to accommodate the bigger and better gun. Which was still a, um, a 122mm D25, but this was the modified version. The IS-3 had the 122mm uh, D25, this had the D25A, a vastly improved version of the gun. But it was still the same calibre, it was just an improvement because the IS-3's handling really was that bad. Interestingly, unlike other tanks of the Soviet era, this one was never exported outside of the Soviet Union. It was purely a Russian Soviet Union tank, which is strange. The final version of this tank was the T-10M, which was supplied with both um, APDS, armor piece in disregarding Sabo, and heat ammunition. And interestingly enough, one prototype was also made into the Object 268, the TD that we have in the game at Tier 10, which is, in fact, an IS-8, which isn't an IS-8, it's actually a T-10M, which was turned into an Object 268. See how confusing all these Russian tanks can get? Comparison-wise, you can see here that the IS-8 has an extended hull with more road wheels than the IS-3, and if you look here, the IS-8 and the IS-5 are, in fact, the same hull, just a different turret to accommodate the different and better gun. So in real terms, the IS-5 is actually a stock IS-8 until you upgrade the turret and upgrade the gun. It's straightforward. It realistically, it, has the same, it should have the same armor. And, you know, it's a performance mix between an IS-3 and the penultimate version of the T-10M which is the real tank. The IS-8 was never called an IS-8, oddly enough. There's a picture of the uh, IS-8 at yeah, the Great Patriotic War Museum in Moscow. It's a funky looking tank and it led on, it actually came after the IS-7, funnily enough, it didn't come before the IS-7. 
Hence the reason why it's an IS-8, 9 and 10, not an IS-7. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been a brief look at the confusion of the IS-3, the IS-5 and the IS-8. By all means, comment and everything below. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. It's a lovely thing to do. It costs you nothing but a smile on my face. If you only replay, send them to me at FujitsBlitz, gmail.com or post them to my Discord server. And until the next time, guys, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because that is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.